Welcome back everybody, it's Destiny Jesus here. In this video, I'm going to be recapping what you guys should be doing going forward into the FNCS as it looks right now. If you guys didn't know, Fortnite Competitive posted a massive blog post. I mean, I'm going to be recapping what they covered in it. The FNCS prize pool, how the FNCS is basically works and how I'm just going to explain it. They also made some changes to FNCS broadcast, but mainly I'm going to be focusing on the competitive gameplay changes and what you guys need to be aware of coming forward into your scrims and your practicing, how the solo Saturdays are going to be working, which is actually something really crazy that they're now starting to do, how the more trio cash cups, and as well as the LTM changes and tournaments that we made. The one biggest thing that I think from this update is the fact that console prize pools are basically gone. There's only going to be some exclusive console tournaments and there's no longer going to be the multi-track console FNCSs running alongside. Let's get into this. First things first, let's have a look at the competitive gameplay changes that Epic Games are making. Bear in mind that these should be getting posted and actually changed on the day of release of this video, so they will be in fact taking part during the Duo Dreamhack event that's happening this next week, this next coming week. This also will be affecting the whole of competitive and everything moving forward. So first things first, it's just the addition of lever action. We now have four shotguns in the game. We've got the Dragon's Riff, the Charge, the Tack, and the lever action. In my opinion, the lever action is one of the most solid shotguns in the game. Really low skill ceiling, but it is extremely good if you've got good aim with it. I still, however, would recommend the tack as pretty much the base shotgun. Obviously, the purple and gold charge are really good, but in most cases, the tack will be the most viable shotgun, especially for endgame. Lever action does kind of fill that niche where you can more consistently get that shotgun I spawn, and it behaves like a pump, and it's pretty fun to use. Now, secondly, we've got two massive changes when it comes to movement. Rift fish have completely been vaulted. They're no longer taking part in competitive. That is a good change in my opinion. No longer people can just rift away from any kind of fight and get away from it. No longer is going to be like 30 people in the air at once on first moving, all saving their mats and making the games really laggy. That is a really good change. And it means that you guys kind of have to use a lot more strategy when it comes to your rotates. Using dead side rotates are a lot more important. Having a strong IGL and also making sure that you've got strong positional plays early game and mid game. Another big change would comes with the movement is the shockwave grenades being vaulted. You can't go for any kind of bounce or shockwave rotates on them all. You can't shockwave and land on somebody. This is going to completely change gameplay since shockwaves have been in for a very long time. I do think overall this is a really good change because shockwaves are probably one of those annoying items in the game and they can get you killed in the end game without any warning. Now next, they've actually gone ahead and removed IO guards. This is probably one of the best changes in this entire update. IO guards are absolutely annoying. They really add nothing to the game. Spots like Misty around mid-map near Sweaty will be a lot better and you'll be able to rotate a lot more free mid-game without worrying about IEO guards running into you. Sand tunneling as well, which has been disabled for a while now, is actually gone ahead and re been re-enabled. This is really good because it means you can cross the majority of your mid-map rotates for free. This also will lead to some end-game situations where players will be sitting in the sand during moving zones, which could cause some issues, but it shouldn't be anything as bad as Riffish and Shockwaves were before in terms of lag. End game. Bear in mind that sand tiling is a really good play that you can do if you're a solo and you're trying to clutch up some extra placement. Whenever you've got a zone near salty or near any of the mid-map areas, make sure you're trying to keep sand rotates in mind. Also, they went ahead and changed how many bars that you spawn with in competitive playlists. This isn't the most crazy change, but it is pretty drastic overall. It means that you can upgrade easier, means that you can use bounties and upgrade to a purple immediately, and it is pretty impactful overall. So make sure you keep that in check, and also make sure you check out fortnite.gg to see exactly where players are going to be spawning and what AIs there is to upgrade with. Now I'm going to explain how the FNCS works. This is completely different to how the FNCS has worked in the past. There is also a reboot round as well. And there's also a new thing where the grand finalists who get top three in their respective trios will be able to qualify automatically to the next trio grand finals, which I think is a really good change. But let's get into this. So how do the actual qualifiers work? This is for the EU region. Everybody in Champion League can play in the open qualifiers. The top 1500 teams will go to round two from the open qualifiers. The top 250 teams will go to round three of the qualifiers. Now from here, we'll get into round four. The top 33 teams will qualify into round four. So now once you qualify for the round four in the top 33, the top 10 teams will go ahead and qualify to the heats, which is now called the semifinals. Bit of a weird wording, but basically that means if you're able to qual through the certain weeks and get to that top 10 position, you automatically qual through the heats. There's also series leaderboards for you guys who are really good at consistently throughout the weeks. The top 102 teams on EU will get chosen for the series leaderboards and will get into the heats. When it comes to the heats, there's going to be four different heats and the top eight teams will qualify and advance into the grand finals. This is a pretty big change, mainly because it means we also have the reboot round coming into effect again. Now, how the reboot round works is basically the top nine to 16 teams who didn't qualify, but also did pretty decent during their respective heat, will play one wild card match and the winner of that one match will go ahead and get placed into the grand finals. This normally takes part on the exact same day as the major grand finals, which should be six games long 
as previously stated. Also, the biggest changes when it comes to these tournaments is the fact that if you've already qualified through the heats, so let's say you got top 10 in that round four, and you're already in the next heats coming in the next few weeks, you're not able to play the qualifiers anymore. This is a really big change because it means that the same top tier pros won't be able to dominate over and over. The fact that there's no money involved in the heats or in the actual qualifying round is a pretty drastic change in my opinion. This means that the top end is way more stacked in terms of prize pool. And for you mid-range players who are making heats but maybe not qualifying to grand finals, you're not gonna be able to make money for just qualifying through heats anymore. You need to be able to qualify to grand finals. Now let's go ahead and look what the money is looking like for this year in terms of prize pool. We're gonna have four FNCS seasons throughout 2021. Each one of these four FNCSs is gonna be a $3 million prize pool. That leaves us with 8 million left over for any solo cash cups, any extra tournaments that they're gonna have throughout this year, any LTM cups, any content creator cups, all of that 8 million will go to those other prizes instead. Now for each one of the prize distributions per region, EU is gonna have 1.35 million, which is absolutely crazy. That's nearly double what it was previously. And also the fact this is all going into the grand finals prize pool means that everybody is gonna go ahead and placing during that only. You're only gonna make money through the grand finals and the prizing for actually doing well in that it's probably going to be doubled. Last year for winning the FNCS Grand Finals, Mongrel made 37k just for the Churros Grand Finals. This season and for each one of the FNCSs this year, it's probably going to be doubled as well. Same thing goes for all the other regions. The Grand Finals prizing money is probably going to be doubled overall because there's no heats and there's also no console split track prize pool as well. One quick note is just the fact that they're increasing the amount of broadcasts. They can do French, German, Spanish broadcasts as well. And also the fact they're doing the Summer Smash broadcast for the OCE players and their own region as well, which is pretty good. Now, this is probably one of the best parts about this entire blog post. And this is what I think you guys should be looking forward to. Uh, if you don't have a good trio at the moment, you're not really feeling confident about your chances of making grand finals to make money. These solo Saturdays, this is absolutely crazy. Every single Saturday, while the semi-finals of the FNCS is gonna be on and the qualifying weeks, these solo tournaments are gonna be taking place. The first one should be relatively easy because it's gonna have not none of the FNCS players in, but the players who get that top 10 in, in the semi-finals and they're gonna be not able to play the next week, they're gonna be playing these solo Saturdays as well, making them extremely competitive as well. I don't know the exact prize format for these, but I would recommend that you guys just put a lot of effort into preparing for solos, especially for these events if you don't have the best trio at the moment. Also, what they have done is instead of having bi-weekly trio tournaments, meaning one every two weeks, they're now having non-stop weekly trio tournaments every single Monday, so you guys can get consistent practice for Trio FNCS coming up soon and it has the same scoring format as well which is great. Also what they're going to go ahead and do is have some more console exclusive competitions. Obviously they got rid of the FNCS which I know some of you guys not be too happy about but they are going to be going ahead and making sure that there are still console tournaments running like the Xbox Cup, the PS4 Cup or even maybe some content creator cups throughout the year. They finish off the blog post saying see you in FNCS and I think this is probably one of the best ways that you guys can prepare for is just making sure that you're looking at these solo Saturdays and trying to pop off in them if your true options aren't too good. Obviously, there's no heats money anymore, so I would highly recommend putting a lot of effort into these solo competitions. And the last thing to quickly mention is just the fact that there is going to be this Pele Cup that's on tomorrow. This basically is an open round tournament for anybody you can play in. And if you get top 3,500, as you can see here, you get a bunch of different skins, which is actually pretty cool, as well as you get this unknown item, which I'm pretty sure will end up be a dance. You basically get all of these different outfits, which are basically the new skins, all the different midfield masters, sergeant sweeper, uh, basically just a lot of different football skins that are customizable as well. So make sure you're trying to play that tomorrow. Also, if you're on the EU region, you can go ahead and sign up for this Phase City Cup. This is actually pretty cool when it comes to just Fortnite collaborations of orgs. This is the Man City and Phase Clan collab, my org. So these guys are actually going to be ahead and playing in this tournament. And the top 100 get all of these same skins, but they also get this rare fancy footwork emote as well. So that's top 100 only. So if you guys are looking for some actual solo practice, make sure you sign up to all of these different tournaments. This is happening on the 20th. This is happening on the 21st. Same with all these other org tournaments that are on here. If you're on NA, you need to go ahead and make sure that you sign up to the Atlanta tournament. You can basically do this through the online site and you can go ahead and sign up and we'll get top 100 on this. Really good salary practice. I'm not sure how stacked it will be, but it is good practice when it comes forward to trying to prepare for these solo Saturdays that are going to be coming out soon. Now, that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and can actually learn a couple new things like this new tournament's coming up. I will probably be doing an updated meta video or maybe some more videos on scrims that are going to be happening with this new meta. So make sure that you guys keep an eye out for those coming up on my channel and also to leave a like if you enjoyed the video.